If you struggle with hair that's maybe thinning or damaged, dry, this is what we're breaking down. How can we supply it with the nutrients, the foods, the care to get it to look as good as we can for as long as we can? But how do we keep it nutrient filled? How do we take care of this thing that has so much to do with our appearance? We're breaking it down right now to guide you while we go. I've laid out my resource guide and this will have and break down as I go my research step by step. Let's break down the factors of hair loss. I've consolidated these into my top five. Top five causes. Of course, I'm going to deliver the top five solutions to these causes for hair loss. These are the most common reasons. So number one, hormone imbalances. What are the top keys for balancing out the hormones? Number one, excess androgens. This is huge when it comes men and women. This really impacts you men quite a bit. Excess buildup in the body. Okay. For men, excess estrogen. For women, some excess androgens in the form of testosterone. Okay. So it's kind of this balance between men and women. So that estrogen men can build up in the liver. That's where a lot of it is stored. And that's going to add extra belly fat. It's going to create problems with all the reproductive parts of the male, and then it can create thinning of the hair. Now, this comes from different types of plastics, different types of meats. We're getting a lot of synthetic exposure to hormones going in the system. Women, on your side, things like birth control, things like hormones in meats, things like plastics are altering your estrogen content, but can also build up the androgens in your system. When you have too much of that, you're growing hair in the wrong places and it's thinning in the right place where it's supposed to be growing, right? So this imbalance of androgens and estrogens inside of the liver. So the main solution to go after this, right? Let's cut off some of the sources. So that would be birth control. Women, listen, I can't, I'm just not sitting here telling you like, throw it out. I'm just saying there's consequences of shutting that machine down when maybe you're in your 20s or your 30s or even 40s, or maybe you're taking it for some kind of pain or some kind of, you know, menstruation problem that's going on. I certainly am not the one experiencing that. So I can't, you know, judge that. And it's easy for me to just say, don't do that. But there are other ways if it's just for having to be safe so that you don't end up in a situation where you're, you know, having a child and you didn't want one kind of thing, right? There are other ways to go around that, you know, married, not married. There are other ways to go after a reproductive system that's maybe very heavy or painful. And maybe that's the reason why you're taking it. Okay. So that is one cause of it. Now, another one is going to be the meats that you eat. If the cow, if the chicken, if the pig is given a lot of hormones, those end up in you. That's actually your primary source of those hormones. So men, this is huge for excess estrogen in the system. Women, excess estrogen or excess testosterone in the system. This is massive. So we got to clean up our meats. It's one of the first things I tell people to start with when it comes to cleaning up their foods. Instead of buying organic broccoli, get a grass-fed meat. Get a hormone-free meat. Even if you can't get grass-fed or pasture-raised chicken or wild-caught fish, at least have it on the package that says no hormones. Cut the sources out. The other thing is plastics. That's number three. Okay, so it's birth control, you know, the drugs that you're taking. We're going to talk a little bit more about those in just a moment. We're going to break down the meats that we're eating. We got to be focused on those and we want to be focused on how can I just use less plastic in my life? Sitting in front of me here, my Living Good Daily water bottle, right? I'm going with glass all day long. It's got, you know, I am the solution on it and it's got my little challenge of making sure I get enough of it. Dr. Living Good usually doesn't have a challenge. I'm like a fish right? But maybe it helps you get more water in, which would be a good thing for the hormones in your hair and your skin, especially stay tuned for that in a moment, but cutting out forms of plastic. How do I avoid it more, especially cooking in it or putting your food in it for storage. So storage purposes, we like to use glass drinking out of it. Like to use glass, any kind of plastic that's getting heated up and then you're eating it. That's the ones to watch out for. So for that reason with the microwave, I'm out <laughs> because a lot of times we're eating something in a plastic dish, right? Microwave itself is a whole other conversation. So some of the main sources that you could be addressing that we could be looking at to say, okay, how do I get this excess out? How do I cut down? You know, we got birth control. We've got the plastics, right? Look at this on the spot here and clean meats. All right, let's do all of those to try to cut the sources out. Now, once these are in, how do we get them out? That's where we really want to cleanse this liver, okay? So if you are suffering with hormone-related issues, 
I would absolutely look at cleansing the liver. Very important thing to be doing. Cutting off the sources, cleansing the liver. Now, continue to move through. PCOS related symptoms, this can be a driving factor. The thyroid can be a driving factor, okay? Now, for PCOS, I would attack it the same way. I would still do the liver cleanse, but I would be focused on if you're in a menopausal state, significant hormone changes, that's another one to consider. Now, if it's thyroid related problems, if you don't know, your hair is thinning, check your thyroid numbers. Is TSH low? How's T3 and T4? And then finally, if you're gonna check your thyroid, I believe you must check your antibodies, your thyroid peroxidase it's called, but you wanna know if there's antibodies in there. And what that means is that does the thyroid have or producing antibodies to fight something in the body? If the thyroid is fighting and there's thyroid antibodies involved, that means there's some kind of infection or toxin coming from some other part of your body that seeped through the gut, that's gotten into the bloodstream, and now it's attacking the thyroid. A good example of this is a virus that may have crossed over. Epstein-Barr, the herpes virus, like cold sore type thing. Some of those that cross over live in the system, attached to the thyroid, a blood test can't pick it up. We can't see it, right? But something's messing with that thyroid. This is viral related, why also there's a connection with pandemic related viruses and hair loss, right? Stressing that system, is it stressing the thyroid? So getting some blood work there, very good idea. Make sure you check the antibodies. So many people post up a question like, well, this is my thyroid you know, numbers, what do I do? Or I have thyroid problems, but they've never checked if they have antibodies. If you have antibodies, you have a gut related problem. Go back to the liver cleanse, start there. That's why it's such a huge starting point and start working your way through it. You start flushing out the liver, flushing out the gut, do the proper blood work. And then I would consider an advanced gut reset if you do have antibodies. If you're concerned with the thyroid, give it the proper nutrients. If you know you've got some numbers that are off, support it with proper thyroid nutrients. Medications, now this is giant list right here. I've got two of them. I mean, look at some of these. So heart medications, blood pressure medications, hormonal conditions and medications. We just talked about birth control, hormone replacement, male androgen hormones, anabolic steroids, prednisone, TRT. Those can cause hair loss. Inflammation and the drugs of, so all these arthritic drugs, NSAIDs, other anti-inflammatories, methotrexate, Parkinson's medications, thyroid medications, ulcer medications. That's just half the list, right? What else creates it? Acne medications. Imagine that, right? Blood anticoagulants, cholesterol drugs, epilepsy drugs, depression meds. Look at that list. All of those are linked. There's some of the big dogs up top to hair loss. Diet drugs, antifungals, eye drops, and gout. Why don't we ever talk about that? We're going to hims and hers and doctors and all this stuff to try to get our hair solution. We're not even looking at, maybe I should check my medication list. Easy way to do it is go to drugs.com and then just search your medication or medications and see if there's any side effects, like drug interactions between them, but read the side effects for your drug. If you haven't done that, I think it's a bit irresponsible for the whole system to not really give you like, hey, by the way, we know in studies, this is what went down. I had my dad's whole packet printed out. I still have it. Looking into those and you realize some of you are taking drugs for the side effects of drugs. I'm not trying to get rid of all of them. I'm just saying, be aware of these. Maybe that's the cause of why we have hair loss. So if that is creating it and you go look up your meds and wow, talk to your doctor about it, all right? But let's try to counteract it. So it'd be very important to add in the, the needed vitamins and support your liver, like we just talked about, to handle the side effects of the medications. Increase antioxidant foods. I love blueberries. I love moringa. I love greens. I'm literally drinking moringa right now. Like this is my antioxidant drink to start each day because it's one of the purest forms of antioxidants in organic fermented coffee combined with arguably the most antioxidant food on the planet, which is moringa. So combines it together. Eat more antioxidant foods. Help your skin and your hair and your nails out. And then if there's unnecessary meds, yeah, that's the whole goal to minimize the use of those. So it just, you know, instead of using a, a pounding aspirin or ibuprofen because you're in pain, eat cleaner foods or, you know, the unnecessary ones. Now, for the ones that you are on, you just 
dig into something like drugs.com if it's staying hair loss and that's what you're struggling with you might want to have that conversation with the doctor like wow i think this might be connected potentially but let's help that liver out which that goes back to that liver cleanse so that's number two medications could be a cause right could be a major factor a lot of people overlook it third main cause from a hair perspective autoimmune conditions so if it is we talked a little bit about this already with the thyroid side of things you measure the antibodies you do have an autoimmune condition you have and alopecia, you have, you know, some kind of, you know, psoriasis, something that's making the hair fall out. For that, we really go after the gut. I truly believe a lot of the source of this is the gut. And the reason for that is because your gut houses 80% of your immune system, because that's where all your friends live. You have more bacteria and microbes in your body than you have cells. It's kind of disgusting, but it's true. In your gut, it's just lined with, it's just this living environment in there. And we can throw it out of balance very, very quickly. And when it's out of balance, those are like your soldiers, there's chinks in the armor and the gut gets leaky. And then now things start to permeate into the bloodstream that shouldn't have been there. When things are floating around in your bloodstream that should not be there, toxins, viruses, chemicals, then it creates a inflammatory response. Well, then organs take hits like the thyroid or you can suffer from hair loss. During that time, you would eat more of an anti-inflammatory and elimination diet approach to remove foods that might create gut and microbe imbalances. Gluten, dairy, grains, rancid oils. Now, you don't have to eat this way all the time, but during this period of a gut reset, those are very valuable. I would also be adding in omegas and turmeric to knock down inflammation. Number four, stress. The fourth main reason of losing hair, thinning hair, damaged hair, stress. Now, during the virus that so many people went through and so many people dealing with hair loss, a lot of it was stress related. That virus stresses the system. And how I know this is because of another condition that popped up, significant folds, three folds, four folds, shingles. So shingles was on a way increased rise during the pandemic because post virus, that thing stressed the system so much that it ended up flaring up and allowing an opportunity for other dormant viruses sitting in the system like shingles to pop up. I literally experienced that myself. And so hair loss did the same thing. When you stress the system that much, you're using up the supplies of zinc, iron, magnesium to fight viruses, and it didn't leave much for hair. So we saw people have a lot of thinning issues going on. So we wanna make sure we're supporting that immune system. And if you've ran through a buzzsaw of viruses, your immune system is compromised, then we need to be doing immune supporting protocols. Now, if stress is really overwhelming the system, then we also wanna be doing proactive things to support it. Now, my favorite nutrient for stress are adaptogenic herbs. There's very good research pertaining to ashwagandha, rhodiola, some of the great adaptogenic herbs that help bring down cortisol levels. There are breathing exercises that we regularly teach. Another great way to handle and lower stress levels. It seems so simple, but one minute deep breaths in, one minute deep breaths out, acting like you're smoking a cigarette. You don't have to put your fingers like that, but you get the concept of it and repeating that for one minute while you're driving in the car. Stimulate your healing de-stress system called your parasympathetic nervous system to calm down your sympathetic nervous system, which is your stress system. That's how it counteracts it. Electrolytes are very depleted when you're stressed. You dump potassium when you're stressed. So you gotta re-top that up. Proper salts, proper potassium, proper magnesium. That's why I take electrolytes on a daily basis. And then possibly when things are stressed, you can then turn to some of these therapies that do have blood flow stimulating effects. Red light therapy on the head, possible micro needling on the head. The whole point here is to stimulate blood flow. Stimulate, like when you scrape your fingers down your skin, it kind of leaves a red mark on there or a white mark that stimulating surface level blood flow, that's kind of what you wanna be doing on the head to stimulate in those areas that don't have the hair growth, right? And I know for some of you, it's a little dicey because hair is falling out while you're doing some of these things. But once you've kind of gone through the hair fallout period, now you wanna stimulate blood flow back in there. Red light also does that. Or then you go to like, you know, some kind of clinic and they do micro needling. That is an option, right? And I just think instead of all the very chemical laced drug creams or gel, 
oils or things that we're putting in our hair, how can we stimulate that in a more non side effect way? That would be the choices right there. You know, so for men or for women, those are possibilities. But let's make sure we got the nutrients in. Let's make sure we're handling our stress levels. The adaptogenic herbs, electrolytes, or immune support might be great ways to support those. And then finally, just sheer nutrient deficiency. So I believe if you are struggling with hair loss, thinning hair, damaged hair, the main place to start is just add in the right nutrients. Give your body the top up that it specifically needs. Now you might have a side condition, thyroid, immune, stress, those things, okay? Those are other primary causes that could be going on. But if it's just sheer hair loss, what can I do? Focus on the main nutrients. So I just started digging into like, okay, what nutrients do what? And I came up with this laundry list of nutrients that really help support growth of the hair, strength of the hair, health of the hair. Your hair needs these elements. Copper, zinc, selenium, vitamin D, vitamin K, silica. I like to get it from bamboo extract, so it's more in a food form as opposed to just straight up silica. Ginseng, horsetail herb, keratin, directly involved with the layers of the skin as well. So I just started digging into the research on this. Saw palmetto as a possible herbal solution to hair loss. The importance of biotin, riboflavin, folate, B12 in the methylated version for the body, the skin, the hair, the nails, copper, zinc, selenium, and B vitamins. And it's important for the hair. The role of vitamin D and other vitamins in hair loss. Bamboo extract as a source of silica to support healthy skin and hair. Hair growth potential from ginseng. The effects of blends of horsetail on hair health. Keratin supporting hair health. Eggshell membrane in that form of collagen. I think you should be paying attention to each of these that we talked about. I think you need to address your hormones. You need to talk and think about medications. We need to look at autoimmune conditions if you have one. If you have too much stress, we got to address that. Now, there's the hair side of things.